Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to this regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is Wednesday, October 19th, 2005. Could we have the roll call by the town clerk, please? Chairman Swift Kayada. Here. Councillor Backer. Here. Councillor Fritz. Here. Councillor Lynch. Here. Councillor McKenney. Here. Councillor Moles. Here. Councillor Roberts. Here. And the town manager. Here. And the town clerk. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, first on our agenda is um, a remembrance of William H. Jordan, Sr., um, who died recently. And I just wanted to say a few words about him um, on behalf of the council and the community. Um, because the truth is that we have lost a great citizen of Cape Elizabeth. Bill Jordan served his community tirelessly and in many capacities. He served years as a selectman, as a town councilor, a trustee of the Cumberland County Civic Center, and he was also the chief of the fire department as well as a member for scores of years. He helped make a reality in this town, the purchase of Fort Williams from the federal government, the creation of Crescent Beach State Park, the acquisition of Gullcrest, the development of the Greenbelt, the building of the pool, and of what we now know as the Cape Elizabeth High School, the transition of an open dumping, uh, an open burning dump to a model transfer station and recycling center. And he did a lot more than that too. He was a noted farmer in this community for years and years. He worked with the Maine Farm Bureau and he worked with many other community organizations as he raised a family in our community. In short, he was a role model of how much a citizen can do for his or her community to help and support that community. He loved Cape Elizabeth. His selfless service has been an inspiration to me and to many others. He will be greatly missed, and I'd like to offer on behalf of the town and the council our condolences to his family. And could we have a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> OK, next on our agenda, um, the minutes of the meeting for September 12th. Do I hear a motion? I'll move approval of the minutes of September 12th. Second. Are there any changes or corrections? I have one change that I would like to add. It's not really a correction. It's more of an addition. On the second page, under item number 207-0405, having to do with the proposed Fort Williams Park easement, um, it's noted under that item that members from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission were present at the meeting. Also, Joel Russ of the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation was present. And I would like to add that he was present and spoke at the meeting, if that is acceptable to the rest of the councilors. Hearing no object objection. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. OK. Item number 2130405. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Thank you, Mike. Reports and correspondence. Paul. I'd like to bring up one point just so that uh, to bring the council up to date. Um, as you know, I serve in the Greater Portland Council of Governments, and I'm on the executive board, and now I'm on the steering committee as well, and I'm serving as the vice president of that organization. And just to bring you up to date of what we're doing uh, this year, basically three things. We're going to develop a regional comprehensive plan. We're looking to continue to strengthen the capacity of GP COG as an information resource to the member towns. And we're looking to reorganize uh, the Southern Maine Economic Development District 
to bring the development, economic development district in line with the planning district. And that's, it looks like it's going to go forward. Uh, we've made a lot of progress in that area. And that's to support the member communities. And basically, for people that don't understand this, Greater Portland Council of Governments is pretty well contiguous with uh, Cumberland County. Uh, each, com each member town or city voluntarily belongs and pays dues to that organization, and it helps um, with some of the planning and some of the resourcing that towns may not have on their own. So that's what's happening. Great. Thank you. And thank you for representing CAPE on that, on that uh, important group. Is there other, um, are there other reports? Councilor Maltz. Yes. Uh, I'd like to mention that, as you all know, I represent Cape Elizabeth on the Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee, and we've had our first two meetings over the last two weeks. Uh, we're looking at manager proposed 2% increase in the county budget, which is down considerably from what the departments requested. Uh, this process will go on for the next several weeks. The meetings will be televised and sent out to the different communities. This year, uh, like every other year, at the end of the budget season, before they adopt the budget, they go to the district, and it's a pretty wide district. They have at least three meetings across the county, and I have offered up Cape Elizabeth as one of the sites to have one of the regional meetings, where the county commissioners would come, give a report on what they're proposing for the budget, why the budget is what it is, and give the public a chance to ask questions and give input. Uh, so I'll be coming back to for a date in early December that we might be able to use the council chamber and try and get residents from Cape Elizabeth and Scarborough and South Portland to come down and meet the county commissioners and the budget advisory committee and ask questions. So just so the public knows that will be coming up uh, in early December, maybe even as early as December 1st if the chamber's open. But we'll uh, be letting you know that probably in the, at the November meeting. Okay, thank you. Other hmm. reports or correspondence? I have two things. Um, Maine Municipal Association had its annual convention October 5th and 6th, and along with Councillor Roberts and our town manager, um, I attended and uh, found it to be interesting, as usual, and um, I just wanted to let people know that that had happened. It's an opportunity for some training and also for some exchange of ideas of what's going on in municipal government. And secondly, the Land Trust held a very successful fall festival on September 25th. I'd like to congratulate them on that. I'd also like to thank them for the opportunity, along with three other of our, on our council, I had the opportunity to be a judge at the pie contest, which was one of the most enjoyable duties I've had since being on the council. And we had the opportunity to try, how many pies was it? I tried at least 18. Pie. Yeah, it was, it was in the double digits. It was a very difficult decision, but we came up with some winners. But um, I just want to congratulate the Land Trust. It was a really nice event. It was a good thing for the community, and uh, I'm glad it was a big success for them. A key lime with orange in it. Jack, was that the best pie or what? I bought the whole pie. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Um, and I hope they ask us back again next year. Um, re, uh, that's it for reports and correspondence, the town manager's report. So, thank you, Madam Chairman. Very briefly, at the last council meeting, Councillor Moles requested that I communicate to the school board that he had received complaints regarding the new driveway configuration in front of the high school. I did pass that along to the superintendent of schools. Uh, and the superintendent of schools, I know, has subsequently spoken to Councillor Moles. He subsequently uh, spoken to me. And what the school department is looking at is if you're coming out of the high school, the, there's, two, there's two lanes, but they only come partially down. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the right turning traffic gets held up behind the left turning traffic because there isn't enough stacking space on the right. And they're looking at reconfiguring that to add some additional uh, stacking space in the right lane, which should help folks to get out, out of there uh, quite a bit sooner. We also uh, had submitted on June 20th to the Maine Department of Transportation uh, supplemental information on uh, that they were looking for regarding the proposed traffic light that the planning board required that the council had uh, authorized the application for. 
uh, back quite a few months ago, uh, they assure me in a conversation within the last two days that we should have that report by the end of this week. The, the, their response to our June 20th letter. Okay. And their response will indicate what? The, the availability of the funds or? No, there are no funds available. This was, they, as, as it's on a state highway, they need to approve okay. uh, the fact that there might be a light there. Okay. And what is, if I might ask, what is the status of the funding for that light? The status of the funding of that particular light remains the status that it has for some time. Uh, the, it was applied for state funds, federal funds. Uh, that grant was not received. Uh, the, the hope was to spend some of the interest earned during the construction of the high school project for that, although that has not been a, a formal council vote. There are also monies set aside in the roadway drainage improvement account in this year's budget for that. Uh, aside from that, uh, there was a, there was a uh, on the regular uh, plan of uh, road improvements, uh, there was money originally put in through the PACS process, federal and state money, uh, for a traffic light at Shore Road, Scott Dyer, for repairs to Spurwink Avenue from uh, the Spurwink Church back to the Puda Club, uh, for paving on the outer part of Route 77, uh, for paving on Sawyer Road, and for paving of uh, Shore Road from here back to Fort Lee, and the, the big Spurwink project. Uh, because of all the set-asides in the new highway bill, uh, this, while the state had been expecting to allocate 18 million over two years for Greater Portland, uh, there will apparently only be 11 million. Uh, the tax committee is going to be looking at it tomorrow. The recommendation from the, the, the chairman and the vice chair, who are from uh, Yarmouth and Saco currently, uh, as well as the, the executive director, is that the Sawyer Road project not be funded, which is what we expected anyway, that was already in limbo, and that the local share of the balance of those projects be increased by approximately 5%. Uh, but the projects would still be 75% uh, or more funded uh, with uh, federal and state dollars. So uh, I in expect that there will probably be a, a decision on that tomorrow. Including the light? Including the light, yes. Okay. Including the light at Scott Dyer, right. Shore Road, Route 77. Thank you. Thank you for that update. I didn't mean to get you off track, but I thought okay. people might be wondering. Um, okay. Is there anything else in the town manager's report? Okay. Uh, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. This is an opportunity for anyone um, who would like to come forward to step to the podium and uh, discuss anything they would like to discuss with the council. That's not on the agenda. So come forward if you want to come forward. I think someone's only come forward once or twice ever that I've seen, so no one's coming forward. So we're moving on <laughs> to item 213, which I tried to get to a little earlier um, by skipping over a number of things. Item 213-0404, rather, has to do with an accord with the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. Is there anything you'd like to say to introduce this? No. We, had a, we recently had a workshop on this with the um, trustees of the Thomas Memorial Library and with the found, folks from the foundation. The recommendation is that the council approve the proposed accord with the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. And there's a draft of the text here, but I don't think we need to read the whole draft unless anyone feels a burning need to. Do I hear them or just, should I? Just one point. The, the final paragraph of the draft is an addition that resulted from your workshop discussion. Okay, it so that's a change from the previous yeah. draft. Reads, any member of the Capitals of the Town Council serving on the Foundation Board of Directors shall be nominated to serve by the Capitals of the Town Council. Thank you for that clarification. Do I hear a motion? So moved. I, I move that we um, approve item 2130405, the, uh, an accord with Thomas Memorial Library Foundation, and recommend that um, they move forward. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Before we uh, vote on this, as the council knows, I am a member of the board of the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. Um, and I assume that there is not 
a conflict of interest that would prevent me from voting on this, but I want to raise that um, as an item for council discussion before we vote. I do support this, but okay. I'll leave that to the council as to whether or not it's appropriate for me to vote or whether my abstention is required. I see no conflict, but is there anyone else who would like to? No conflict. Bring it up? Then I don't, I don't think there's any problem with your voting on it. Is there any dis other discussion? Jeff? Thank you. I'm not going to support it. I'm not happy with what happened over at Fort Williams. I don't like the idea of money going to an, another organization that can take, grab the money and tell us what we can do with it. If we don't like it, they hold on to it. And I just, I assume it'll probably pass, and I hope it works out well, but I'm not going to, but I'm not going to vote for it. Thank you. Councilor Fritz, did well, you Well, I, I just wanted to say I, I do support it. I think it's, um, and, and just so the public knows, it's, there's two ways that people can donate to the library, um, the, through the foundation and through the town. So, um, but the money would go to the town, as I understand it, to, and we would, be, we would make the decision on how, um, the way the money is spent final decision. As I understand it, any money that came that the foundation, foundation proposed to give to us, the council would have the option of accepting or not accepting it and deciding what to do with it. I'd Council like to McKenna. make one other point of clarification for the, uh, for the public, and that is that in this particular case, we had this um, a discussion on this, and it was explained quite well. The the difference between this and the Fort Williams situation with, with respect to the foundation is that in this case there's a counselor who's part of the foundation board. The um, director of the library works for the town manager and is responsible to the town. And th that really puts it in a different light in my mind. So we have direct input. So that's why I feel quite comfortable supporting it. Thank you. Are there any comments, Councilor no, I, If I can just add to Councilor McKinney's comments, in addition to the alignment that he referred to with um, a town councilor being a member of the board, um, there are also members of the Library Board of Trustees uh, that serve as members of the board of the foundation. Um, and the library director is an ex officio member of the foundation board. So there is um, a multi pronged alignment uh, between the town and the foundation uh, to ensure that the concerns that were raised with Fort Williams um, don't reappear with the library. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay. All in favor? Six opposed? One. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank the uh, library trustees and the foundation board members. Um, and our library director, who is here tonight, too. And um, thank you for your work on behalf of the library. And that brings us to item number 214-0405, which also has to do with Thomas Memorial Library. Um, proposed amendments to Chapter 4 of the Code of Ordinances having to do with the duties and responsibilities of the Board of Trustees of the library. Do I hear a motion? Councilor Backer. Um, I move the setting of a public hearing for Monday, November 14, 2005 at 7.30 p.m. in the town hall um, on a proposed um, amendment, or actually proposed amendments to the revised official code of the town relating to the duties and responsibilities of the Board of Trustees of the Thomas Memorial Library um, to specifically amend section 4-3-1 of the town code. And is it necessary to read the specific amendment? I don't think so. Okay, well the amendment is set forth um, in our agenda. Um, and it is um, driven in large part by the uh, creation of the foundation um, and the recognition that the uh, trustees of the library uh, will in part be 
uh, well, one of the one of their functions uh, with the creation of the foundation is the recommendation to the foundation board of uh, members to serve on the board. So again, sort of going back to the comments made in support of the last agenda item, um, the idea is to ensure that the foundation board is closely aligned with the board of trustees uh, of the library and that members of the foundation board will come by nomination from the library board of trustees. And the change to the town code is in part to reflect that responsibility. Okay, thank you very much. So we have a motion. I, I second that motion. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of setting the public hearing? 7-0, thank you. And thanks again to the folks who are here from the various boards and, and the library director. We appreciate your, your service to the town. Well, there goes our audience. We should have held that for last. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most exciting thing tonight. Bear with us just for a second. While they talk. <laughs> okay. The next item is item um, 2150405, which has to do the with the um, annual licenses for the Perputa Club. Councillor Fritz, did you have something you wanted to? Well, I'd um, like to recuse myself from voting on this since I'm a member of the Perputa Club. Okay, and I also will be asking to recuse myself on this item because I also have become a member. And so, David, perhaps could you take over as, as finance chair, could you just take over as chair for um, this well, one item? Before you do that, I guess I have a concern about recusing ourselves for membership only where um, there is no financial interest you can't sell your membership it seems to me we would be in a real pickle if four of us were members of the Perputic Club um, likewise um, let's say four of us are members of a church that has something that comes before the council generally recusals are when there's a financial interest so um, I don't want to debate this too long but I, I think that we may be construing this a little too broadly, and I would just point out that if there comes a day when four of us are playing golf at Perputic, um, I'm not sure we're, we're setting the right precedent here. So I would encourage you not to recuse yourselves when the issue is membership only. It's a small town, and we all need to be able to vote on these things. If I could respond, um, I understand your concern. Um, However, in my mind, there is a financial um, implication. And when you're a member, if, if the liquor license went at the club, there would be financial implications for, for members. So if the council does not accept my recusing myself, I'll be abstaining. So either, either way is fine with me, but that's just how I feel about it on advice of my council. <laughs> oh. Yes, Councilor Moles. To echo what Councilor Lynch said, and to be consistent with what I have said the last two years in a row when the Perputic Club came up, that again, I don't think that a, a golf member of the Perputic Club should have to recuse themselves for voting on, on this issue. I mean, I patronize the uh, good table and I don't recuse myself when their liquor license comes up, although I'm not a, a member of the good table. Uh, but if they had a membership, I'd probably join. <laughs> uh, but the Perputic Club is a, a very fine golf club, a good community member, and I, I don't see any issue with passing it, but so uh, again, to be consistent, the last two times in a row I've been opposed to people recusing themselves on, mm -hmm. on this issue. Well, what say you, Council? Mm -hmm. Jack? I tend to agree with uh, Marianne and Mike. If in, unless you're a member of the board and making the decisions, I don't, 
just making note of the fact that you are a member so that people realize that I think that's satisfactory. I had supper there tonight, but I'm still going to vote. <laughs> I, I agree with what Marianne and the comments made. Well, Carol, we can count, so it looks like we're not going to get to recuse ourselves. So that's fine. Then I won't turn it over to David. I'll run this. I can run this item. Um, is uh, as I said, this has to do with the annual licenses at the Perputa Club. Um, I'd like to provide an opportunity. If there's anyone here, is there anyone here? Joel, who would like to speak? Oh, no, Joel. No one here I know Joel is here, but God, he looked shocked. <laughs> I don't think either reporter wants to speak on this item, but I'm just doing as I'm told. The clerk said, please provide an opportunity for the public to speak on this. So none of the three of you wants to speak, so we've had that opportunity. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I would move approval of the annual malt spirituous and, is it vinous? I don't know. Venuous license for the Linus? Buddhist Club. Second. Means wine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? One, two, three, five. All opposed? Zero. Abstaining? <laughs> two. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, item 2160405, we have three different items coming up here, 216, 217, and 218, that have to do with Eco Maine, which is um, apparently the new, the new name, the new organization for RWS. Is there anything the manager would like to do to introduce this? Just that the council has previously received most of the documents relating to these items, and uh, I appreciate the questions that the council had as this, as this evolved, and uh, appreciate the assistance of Kevin Roach as well from uh, Regional Waste System slash EcoMaine in uh, addressing the various concerns that have been expressed. Okay. Do I hear a, uh, a motion for 216? I'll move um, that the town enter into and adopt the successor organization's EcoMaine interlocal solid waste agreement uh, and that the manager be authorized to sign the proposed waste handling agreement. Second. Then moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Okay, we have another item. Item 217-0405, um, which also has to do with EcoMaine. Would you like to say anything, either one of you? Carol? Or Carol, would you like to make a motion? Sure. Um, I'll move that the town of Cape Elizabeth authorize the formation of a non-capital stock nonprofit corporation under the provisions of Title 13B and Title 38, Section 1304-B parentheses five of the main revised statutes. The name of such corporation to be EcoMaine to operate a regional solid waste management system pursuant to the provisions of said EcoMaine's interlocal solid waste agreement. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you. Now we are at item 218-0405, which again has to do with the eco main. It has to do with the board of directors. Carol, would you like to? Okay, um, just um, to note that I've already been appointed as one of the directors, and then we have two seats should we want to uh, have a second person. And I, I'll move that that other seat um, be filled by the town manager. Um, and that the town's voting power would be divided equally between the two on the board of directors. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Jack? I would just like to ask if the town manager is in agreement with this. 
I will accept the appointment. <laughs> <laughs> the honor. <laughs> One more minute. <laughs> okay. And we're, you notice I didn't answer the question. <laughs> we're, we're, we're glad you're accepting. Anything else? Any other discussion? All in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 2190405 has to do with accepting some grant money. Is there anything the manager would like to do to introduce this? No, we're just very pleased to receive this grant for $118,750. One, one irony of this, and for those of you that are at Billy Jordan's uh, funeral, uh, Phil McGoldrick, uh, fire chief, told a story about when the, this, the truck that's being replaced here uh, with this grant was first purchased. Uh, there was, a, there was a big debate as to what to buy for a truck, and there's a group called the Board of Fire Engineers, which makes up all the offices of the, the fire, depart, fire department companies, and Billy was the fire chief at the time, and the, the vote amongst that group was, uh, I think, one to, one to 12 or something, not to buy a particular truck, but Billy was the one vote, and Billy was the fire chief, so they bought the truck that, uh, that Billy wanted, and you know, here it is. You know, all these years later, that truck has really served us well, and uh, you know, has has done so many things, including hauling the wet clean boat. It was originally purchased to, to be able to get into birch holes and some of these places where where bigger trucks can't go. And it was just, you know, the, the irony of, that we really received notice of this grant uh, the day after Billy passed away, and uh, you know, it was interesting that you know, uh, the, the truck that he worked so hard to get. Very controversially, uh, we, we were replacing uh, at the time that uh, Billy passed on. So. Right, many years later. Okay, do I hear um, a motion? I, I move that we accept with gratitude a grant of $118,750 from the U.S. Fire Administration, the Department of Homeland Security, to replace our Service 4 fire truck. The 5% local match of 6250 shall be included as part of the proposed fiscal year 2006 fire department budget. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Seven, it's unanimous. Thank you very much, and we are indeed grateful for that grant. I know it will be put to good use. Item number 220. 0405, which has to do with the proposed expansion of the RB district off of Sawyer Road. Um, would you like to introduce yeah, this? And I know Mr. Fitzpatrick is Very here. briefly, uh, Joel Fitzpatrick's here, Fitzpatrick Associates. He's been working very closely with the town planner uh, really over the last couple of years, uh, looking at uh, development possibilities uh, in this area. and. Uh, also, he's been, he has worked with the woman uh, who has owned this, the property involved, who was uh, agreeable, obviously, to this proposed change. But, but uh, there is a map before you that shows the area. It's, it's adjacent to an existing RB district. And what it's, uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick is really looking for is to have a workshop with the council uh, that you can more in depth uh, look at the proposal, see its implications in terms of development, in terms of the opportunities for clustering, the number of lots that would be created all those different issues and, and really see it on paper. Uh, also, within the ordinance, before the council considers any zone change, it's also required that you refer to the planning board. So that's why it's proposed to refer it both to the workshop as well as uh, to the planning board. And obviously, it's to the planning board without, without bias. It uh, simply would be referred to them for review as well. So could I just ask a process question? Would it um, make sense to schedule the workshop for after we hear from the planning board? No. Uh, it would or to do them just, on two separate tracks? We're going to try to look at maybe after uh, the public, the TV portion of the meeting, look at the workshop schedules uh, because there's a suggestion to put off one of the Conservation Commission ones. And there's a Winnick Woods thing coming on the agenda. Okay. And maybe the, the thinking is we could look at uh, this and that at some, maybe at the December workshop, or, but I, I don't want to get into the, okay. the night debate. Uh, 
Okay. Well, we can Everyone, we can look at scheduling when we have our calendars in front of us. Okay. Uh, Councilor Roberts. Just as a question, on this kind of a, a proposed zone change, what kind of a notification and when are people notified in the neighborhood about it as people in that area that this is being considered? We, that's a, if I might, that's a great question. And prior to the council workshop, it, it won't constitute the legal notice, but we will send a courtesy notice to all of those who would who would later have to receive the legal notice uh, for the public hearing. Uh, we, we will send it for in prior to the workshop date. So, thank you. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the manager before we hear? A well, I have a, a question about the timing of this. Um, we had a proposed um, zoning ordinance change before us in some in the summer. Um, and there was at least some suggestion, I, I, I know people vote on things for different reasons, but there was at least some suggestion that that zoning change was voted down because of a desire to wait until we um, finish the comprehensive planning process, which we are about six months into and we have another 12 months to go. Um, so I guess I have a question. If that is still the desire, um, does it make sense to even hold a meeting at this point um, if we're going to wait a year, number one? Number two, should we wait a year in fairness to the other applicant um, where we turn down a change? I was for that change, and so I'd be happy to bring back that other change, but I don't think it's fair to turn one down and say um, we're going to wait until the end of the comprehensive planning process and then entertain another one um, right now. I just don't know how we explain um, to the public, um, you know, how we're differentiating. I understand. The manager indicated you'd like to say something. Yeah, we, we discussed this at the staff level and we, we noted uh, to Mr. Fitzpatrick that that uh, could be a concern. Uh, it, it's, it's the town planner's feeling as, as well as mine alone that, that this proposal is in keeping with the current comprehensive plan and that, you know, under the constitutional rights uh, to petition one's government, uh, you know, to, to just hold it off and not even be looked at and considered would be inappropriate. In the, in the case of the other instance, the council went through the whole process and only at the end of the process did it reject it. So, you know, I think the feeling in all of these is that everyone has the right at any time to bring anything before the government, and then you as the governmental body have, have the right to, uh, in its final disposition, to do as you see fit. And if I might add, since I was a person who voted against that other matter because, for the very reason you state, um, I think it's appropriate. Uh, what, the reason I voted against it was that what we had voted on several months before or one of the reasons I voted against it was that we as a council had voted several months before not to make any changes, zoning changes, unless they were of an emergency or urgent nature. And I don't know enough about this to have any idea if it's an emergency or an urgent nature or anything like that. And that other applicant did have an opportunity to present her point of view and you know, make her arguments and help us become informed. So I'm, I'm in favor of sending this off to the planning board and to a town council workshop so we can learn more about it. That does not mean that I might not vote in the end that we should wait for the, uh, the new comprehensive plan to be done, but I don't think we should hold up the citizens' right to you know, petition as government, as the manager says, just and until I, we even know all of that. I'm certainly supportive of that. I was mm -hmm. one of the people in support of the prior zoning change. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure as we go forward that the applicant understands how we treated a recent proposal and if they want to petition us, that's great. Um, I won't be hung up by the comprehensive mm -hmm. planning process if it is something that appears to be in the best interest of the town. Um, I would not be um, wanting to delay it, but I did want the applicant to understand that um, that issue is there. And personally, I do have a concern about treating people the same in terms of um, offering 
the time frame when we're going to do things or not do things. I think Mr. Fitzgerald will will receive the same opportunity. Uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick, I'm sorry. <laughs> will first receive the same opportunities that the previous applicant had to present his cases as she did and go through the process. So, um, Carol. I guess I'd just like to hear very briefly from um, Mr. Fitzpatrick um, why the zoning change is being requested, why it's necessary. Would you like to come forward, please? <clears throat> Joel Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick Associates. Um, basically, we, my company has an option on a piece of property here in Cape Elizabeth, and there are three or four different ways to develop this, this piece um, with the current zoning. We feel there's a more responsible way to, to develop this, but it means extending the RB zone. Uh, I'm fine with it either way. I just think that it's going to be better for the town, better for everybody involved, including me, if we extend the, the zone. Um, I would like to present it at a workshop to get a feeling from the town on some guidance and some, uh, some ideas on whether they think it's a good idea or not. If it's not, then we go to, we keep the zone the way it is. I mean, have, have you figured out the difference between how many houses you could put in the RA and, and how many you could put in the RB? Yeah, well, there's, there's more to it than that. And, and really, I'd like to keep that to a workshop. I, 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 you, you really get to see the whole, the whole big picture. And it's, yeah. I, I, that's the I, reason for the I workshop. I think that's the I, reason for the workshop, to get all the details. Right. We don't want to get too much into the details. And I'd just like some guidance from, uh, from you all at, at you know, at, at the workshop to see if, if it's even a, a way I want to proceed. You know, a zone change is, is a time-consuming, expensive, uh, expensive way to go, but we do feel that it's a more responsible way for the town to go, and I think I can show that with the workshop. Okay. Fine, Thank you. Uh, yes, except that Councillor oh, Roberts yeah. was ahead of you in line. <laughs> just a moment. I think actually what I was going to bring up, I'll leave and just discuss later. Okay. Councillor Moles. I was just going to ask the lot size difference between the RB and the RA, in square feet or acreage or... The, the RA, you're, you're, you're required uh, 80,000 square feet per lot, the RA, yeah. the way it's zoned now. RB, uh, you, you, if, if you divide the lot more than, tw more than two, and you get into the three, uh, it has to be an average of 15,000 square feet, average. Which means you can have some 10,000 square feet lots and you can have some 20,000 square foot lots as long as all the lots at the end, when you do the whole calculation, uh, they average 15,000 square feet. And the Thank RA is 80,000 square feet? And the RA is 80,000. Eight, 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 zero. RB, so it's two acres. Right. RB, uh, the difference between RB and RA, there's a lot of differences, but one of the big ones is the open space. RB is required 50% open space. I, I think before we get to, it, we're sort of getting into some workshop. This is the reason for the workshop. Here. Right. Yeah, I, I don't want to put you on the spot of trying to do the 30-second version of the workshop <laughs> while you're here. So right. Thank you for, for coming forward. Right. and. Um, we don't even have a motion, do we, at this point? Do I hear a motion? I'll make the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I move that um, the proposal to expand the RB zoning district off Sawyer Road, as presented by Fitzpatrick and Associates, be referred both to the planning board and to a town council workshop. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of referring this to the board, to the planning board and the town council workshop? Oh, I'm sorry. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll look forward to our workshop with you, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Thank you. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, that brings us to item number uh, 221, 0405, the Winnick Woods Master Plan. I don't see John Herrick or anyone else from the Conservation Commission here. Is there anything you would like to say to introduce this or I just want to explain uh, this? thank the Conservation Commission for all their work on this. Uh, it's quite a substantial document, and I think it would be very helpful to get uh, comments from the Planning Board on it and then for the council first to review it uh, at a workshop. This is a town-owned piece that was donated to the town by Alice Larea. Uh, her mother was Ruth Winnick, her father was Lou Winnick, which is the, the origin of the name. And uh, it's a wonderful piece and ties into lots of Greenbelt opportunities. And I, I think the uh, commission's really done a good job looking at this land and uh, coming up with a master plan for its uh, protection. Okay, and do we have to receive the report, or you since it's a draft, after. I didn't know, you do that after technically. After. Okay. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay. To receive. To receive and refer. <laughs> to receive and refer exactly. to the planning board and to a council workshop. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'd just council like to say I'm really impressed with what work the Comprehensive Planning Committee has put out for us in terms of master plans. Yeah. Um, just in the last two years, it's, and and the whole the whole revision of the green plan. So I. What is it? Oh, I'm sorry, conservation commission. <laughs> <laughs> it's all um, merged together. They have just done a magnificent job of work for it for the town. Jack. Yes, a uh, number of years ago when I was on the conservation commission, uh, Linda Francis Cohn was on at the same time. And Linda did the majority of work putting this together as part of a, I don't, I'm not sure it was a master's degree or what she was working on, but it's, I know yes. she did this work. And by the time it comes back to the council, I probably won't be here. So I just wanted to say thank you to Linda publicly while, while I am here. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you said that. And I also want to add my thanks to Linda Francis Cohn, who did a wonderful job. It was a master's of landscape design program she was going through. And she has now moved out of town, but I just, hope the word receives her somehow that we thank her for her great efforts because she did a great deal of the work here along with Yeoman's efforts by the Conservation Commission. So it's, is there anything else? Quick question. Yeah. Just, just my own recollection. Uh, the house that was on Pickett Street that came before us all oh, about a year ago, that's all been resolved where the house ended up being slightly in the wrong spot. And they had was to move on, something. Who's on Sawyer, not Pickett? Sawyer. It's all been. Uh, had to move the lot line. Sawyer, yes, there's, Sawyer Road. There's still some minor issues that are being dealt with involving that. It is, and it as relates to this master plan and where the parking would be. But the, the legal issues were completed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? It's unanimous, 7-0, thank you. Um, item 222-0405, it has to, and the next one, 223-0405, have to do with the uh, municipal election coming up in November. Uh, would the town clerk like to say anything about these? Uh, 222 is the municipal election warrant. I've also provided for your reference, although it's not required that you uh, approve the state notice of election. But we do have a state election and a municipal election Tuesday, November 8th, and um, the municipal warrant is attached. It needs council approval. Okay. Do I hear, thank you very much. And do I hear a motion on 222? I would move approval on. of the warrant for November 8th, municipal election be approved. Okay, second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? 7-0, thank you. And 223-0405, Councilor Lynch, would you like to make a motion? Oh. I will uh, move that uh, Sharon Gower be appointed as the warden for the election and that Deborah Cabana be appointed deputy wa warden for the November 8th, 2005 election. Second. <laughs> Who 
everyone's very eager on these items. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? 7 0. Okay. And the election is November 8th, and I know the absentee ballot. I don't know if you want to say anything about absentee balloting that it's going on. Just, or whatever. Yes, we, uh, we do have uh, absentee ballots available at the town clerk's office. Uh, there is a link in the upper right hand corner of our uh, website. This is absentee voting. So folks are able to just click on and um, there, there's a form that they can fill out online and they can either fax it or mail it in or certainly pick up the phone and call the town clerk's office for an absentee ballot or come in to see me in person. Great. Thank you. So people can vote by fax now? No, they can <laughs> file a, an application. A oh, all right. I <laughs> just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> I thought that, was, that would be something new. Sort of, you know, <laughs> send in their pizza order and vote at the same time. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. I can't understand why people would use all those other mediums when they can come in to see Deborah anyway. <laughs> Service with a smile at all times. <laughs> Okay, um, item number 224-0405 has to do with the updated general assistance ordinance. Mr. Manager, can you say anything about this? Yes, uh, we have the honor every year of uh, looking at the updated general assistance ordinance. What you have before you, though, are just the appendices. Uh, Deborah Cabana went to print the, uh, the ordinance, and how many pages was it? It was uh, 90, 95 pages. <laughs> Yeah, but I didn't think you wanted a full copy of that. So we, we, we can provide copies if you'd like that. It's uh, boilerplate state recommended. Uh, but uh, it's recommended you set these to public hearing for your November meeting. Okay. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved mm -hmm. and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you. We now have our second period, uh, second opportunity for citizens to discuss items that are not on the agenda. If there's anyone who'd like to come forward. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, thank you. Um, our last yeah. item on tonight's. And before we adjourn, I wonder if I could just mention something out of order that I should have mentioned earlier in the meeting. Do we have to suspend the rules She's to take an item? Can... Oh, you're oh, a citizen. I'm a citizen. Oh, okay. speaking as a citizen? <laughs> and okay. that's probably when I should have done it earlier. I am uh, volunteering and working on a Red Cross blood drive that will take place in the town on October 29th. There's a pretty serious shortage of blood right now in the New England area, and so um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to mention it for people who may be watching at home. The blood drive is Saturday, October 29th from 7 a.m. to noon at St. Bartholomew's Church. Um, and uh, all are welcome, drop-ins are welcome. If you would like to schedule an appointment, feel free to call me at 232-1048 and I'll make sure that you have a scheduled appointment. So thank you for allowing me to announce that. Thank you. Um, our next item is 225-0405 which has to do with negotiations with the Police Association. 06, I'm sorry. Right, oh, 04, oh, oh, okay, it says 06, mm. sorry. Typo, typo. <laughs> um, the town council um, will presumably be going into executive, a very short executive session on this um, because it, uh, some of the pre-work was not available. The, uh, the mail got a little confusing for a couple of the counselors. So it will be short, but I do not anticipate we will be taking any votes coming after we come back into public session. Before the cameras go off, I'd just like to announce some future meetings. Um, our next uh, meeting of the council, workshop meeting with the counselors is um, tomorrow, <laughs> October 20th, which is the annual meeting with the auditors and a review of special funds. Wednesday, October 26th, is another workshop on Fort Williams Park fees. Monday, November 14th, is our next scheduled regular council meeting. And before that, there will be a workshop with the Conservation Commission, 
perhaps, unless we have to reshuffle our schedule. Um, and Monday, December 12th, is a regular town council meeting and the first meeting of the new council year with the newly constituted post-election um, town council. Um, and we have been holding Wednesday, December 14th, for a possible town council workshop meeting. So I just wanted to announce those for anybody who might be watching. Um, and now I'll entertain a motion um, about <coughs> item number 225. I move that the council enters executive session to discuss negotiations with the Cape Elizabeth, with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association in and accordance I, with MS, MRSA section 405, paragraph 60. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ryan.